Hi, in this video, we will be looking at how to solve equations that have fractional coefficients. So the number in front of the x is going to be a fraction in each of the examples that I do in this video. Now, I'm assuming if you are watching this, you have some comfort with one and two step equations. If not, I'd advise you to perhaps watch a video on one or two step equations or both before watching this. I'm also assuming that you are comfortable with fraction operations. So multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. All right, so assuming that you are comfortable with these things, here is how we are going to tackle this problem. So the goal here is we want this x alone. And when I say we want this x alone, we want it to have a coefficient of 1. Not 4 over 7, we just want a coefficient here of 1. Now in order to get a coefficient of 1, if we multiply this fraction by its inverse, we will get a coefficient of 1. What do I mean by its inverse? Well, if I say the inverse of a fraction, all I mean is the flipped version of the fraction. So we have to multiply this by 7 over 4. Because when we multiply by 7 over 4, these will cross cancel to give you 1. And that's what we want in front of the x. However, we can't just multiply one side of the equation by 7 over 4 and then leave and be happy. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we also have to do to the other side of the equation. So here we have on the right on the left side of the equation x or just one x, but I don't have to write the one, is equal to negative 12 times 7 over 4. And here's why I said we need to be comfortable with fraction operations in order to, to solve this. All right, so at this point, we can either cross simplify or multiply going straight across, top times top, bottom times bottom. I will choose to cross simplify in this case because it is significantly easier. So notice I just put my negative 12 over one because I wanted to see both numbers that I'm multiplying as fractions. And so now um, I'm looking for the greatest common factor at the bottom, the greatest common factor at the top. So here, we do have a number that goes into 4 and into negative 12, and that number is 4. So we divide both by 4, and we get that x is equal to negative 3, because negative 12 over 4 is negative 3, over 1 times 7 over 1. All right, now that we've done that, I can multiply straight across across the numerators. So negative 3 times 7 gives us negative 21, and 1 times 1 just gives us 1, which means our answer, our final answer, the solution to this equation is negative 21. All right, let's do one that's slightly more difficult with more than just one step. Okay, so here we have a two-step equation, but it's actually harder than the two-step equations that we've been dealing with because of these fractions. And that's okay, because you know you have all the skills to take care of this. So remember, from back in the day, we, when we started to evaluate expressions, we were using PEMDAS. And then we, when we spoke about solving equations, we spoke about the fact that you're going backwards to not find the answer, but to find a part of the question. So since we're working backwards, we do SADMAP. All right, so we take care of all addition and subtraction first, then we take care of multiplication and division, and if there is any, which there is none in this case, we do exponents and parentheses, but irrelevant in this particular question. All right. So we're dealing with addition and subtraction first. So in this question, we have four-fifths right here, which is added. This is multiplied. We'll deal with this later. We have to deal with this first. So four-fifths is added, so we need to go ahead and subtract four-fifths from both sides of the equation. So I'm going to subtract four-fifths so that it can go away from that side. And whatever you do to the left, you have to also make sure you're doing to the right. 
So I'm going to use the right side of my page for scrap work. I need to do one third minus four fifths. And we spoke about how to subtract fractions, and so we're going to use that skill here. Um, we need a like denominator here. Uh, three and five have a greatest, sorry, a lowest common multiple of 15. We have to divide, multiply that by five to get to 15. Multiply that by five, because whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. And we get an equivalent fraction of, of five over 15. And now we have to do something similar to the 4 fifth. We want to get to 15, so we have to multiply that by 3. Whatever we do to the top, bottom, we have to do to the top, so we have to multiply that by 3. And we get 12 over 15. And now we can just subtract the top, subtract the numerator. So 5 minus 12 gives us negative 7 over 15. All right. That was just scrap work. Now we are ready to keep going with this question. And we get negative 11 over 15 x is equal to negative 7 over 15. So just as a reminder, we got that negative 7 over 15 from doing this subtraction right here. That was the answer for that. Okay, so now that we've done that, it's time to isolate the x, and now we bring in the skill that we just learned on the previous slide. We can go ahead and multiply by the inverse of that coefficient. So we have here that x is being multiplied by negative 11 over 15. We want this to turn to 1, and in order to turn this to 1, we have to multiply it by the reciprocal. So we go ahead and we multiply by negative, don't forget the negative sign, so the sign does not change here, 15 over 11. All right, and so that will help us because it will turn this into 1, and that's what we want. But whatever we do to the left side, we have to do to the right side as well. So we have to multiply by negative, don't forget that negative, um, 15 over 11. And so on the left, we get our 1x, which is what we really wanted. And we're going to have to multiply these. Fortunately, we can simplify here. 15 into itself, 1. 15 into negative 15, negative 1. And now we can multiply straight across the top, and you get negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7 over 1 times 11 is 11. And our answer here is 7 over 11, and we're done.